Hey guys, it's your boy James and welcome to Neo the Greatest, which simply means God is the Great or Neomugawe if I were to translate. And that's what this channel is all about, helping you discover and experience God because God is bigger, better, brighter than anything you've ever seen. And in this video, I'm going to prove that. And if that sounds like fun to you, be sure to like, subscribe, follow, like, whatever you want to do, just to hang around and make sure that you don't miss anything. All right, so let's jump into today's video. So before I jump into today's topic, I'm really excited about launching a new website, neothegreatest.com. This will be the go-to website where I post everything that you need. But I'm really excited about the personalized Bible study section. So, you know, Bible study can be challenging. Sometimes you don't know what you study for. Sometimes you have so many questions that you need answers to. Or maybe you just need a friend to study with. Well, I am making myself available. So if you do want to have a one-on-one -on -one Bible study, be sure to go to www.neothegreatest.com slash Bible study or whatever it is on the screen right now. And you'll be able to have a chance to spend an hour with me and study God's word. All right, let's jump into today's video. As you see in the title, we're talking about snow. What does the Bible have to say about snow now it's that time of the year when it snows vancouver where i am is not really best known for snowing but when it does snow it does and we get interesting reactions and different things happening around it because we're not the best at dealing with snow let's be honest but anyways in the past few days we were blessed should i say cursed or blessed well we'll figure out at the end decide at the end which which one it is but we had so much snow that it actually destroyed the heating system right now it's too cold like you you can't believe it right now if i were to measure the temperatures it's pretty crazy in fact if, as you can see i'm actually in a sleeping bag right now because i'm trying to survive that's how bad it is right now the entire house is covered in snow. Everything is surrounded by snow. It's snow, snow, snow everywhere. And I'm not lying. But on a serious note, we actually do have interesting things happening with snow. As you can see on the screen, some travel plans had to be canceled. There were some delays at the airport. We have some highways that were blocked. It's always crazy, crazy stories. And then, of course, we have people who are having issues with parking. There's always different stories when snow falls in Vancouver, I should add. But what is snow all about? How does it form? What's the science behind snow? Before we dive into God's word to see what God has to say, what is snow anyways? Well, I didn't want anything complicated. I wanted to make this as easy as I can. So what I did is I went to the easiest website, easyscienceforkids.com. No offense, I'm not trying to say you're a kid, but this is the best place to begin. But this is basic Bible study, so we want to break the basics down. So it says snow occurs when water vapors in the air freeze before they can turn into water. This happens when the temperature in the clouds is very cold. Snowflakes are made up of crystals of ice that have formed around beads of dirt in the air. This is interesting. So for snow to form, just to quickly summarize, you know, there has to be moisture or water vapor. And then that has to freeze, right? But it can't just freeze. It needs to have some, you know, some particles in the atmosphere. And I remember when I was doing geography back in those days, or should I say meteorology, uh, they called them hygroscopic nuclei, which is pretty much the same way that rains, uh, rain forms because it needs those particles to attach itself to. And then 
it is able to produce the snow or the rain. At any rate, it continues to say here that the snowflakes start out very small and guess what? They grow. Each snowflake is different and might contain up to 200 crystals. Wow, this sounds so simple, but it's actually interesting. It's very interesting how snow forms, how it's able to, to, to look white and all the different processes and stages that it goes through. All right, enough with science. Now, I want you guys to watch until the end because I have seven fantastic facts about snow that will change your life. I don't want you to miss. But without wasting any time, let's jump right into the video and study the Bible. What does the Bible have to say about snow? And of course, before we proceed, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the blessing of snow. We thank you for the power of precipitation. And as we study tonight, the amazing lessons you have for us in snow, I pray that we may be willing to listen to you and to really answer your calls so that we may be indeed wider than snow. So Father, I pray that you bless each person watching and listening as we are about to dive deep into your word. Give us your Holy Spirit to guide and lead us, to reveal to us the deep things of God, to reveal to us the wondrous things of God. Thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for being with us. We ask and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, where your Bibles? Get your Bibles. A few minutes here and we'll be done. And don't forget, we have something fantastic at the end as we are going to look at fantastic facts about snow that will change your life. All right, so what does the Bible have to say about snow? So I'm using the uh, King James Bible online.org and I simply search snow. This is something very practical you can do for yourself to study God's word and it tells me there's only 24 instances of that word snow and it's pretty short so we should be able to cover this in this video so 7 chapter 37 i should say verse 6 it says for he hath for he for he saith to the snow be thou on the earth likewise to the small rain and to the great rain of his strength and here is where we see god connected to snow that God is actually the one who creates snow he's the one who commands snow he actually is the one who set it up and he's the one who controls the rain as well so snow just just doesn't fall it's actually God guiding it so let's read Job 37 verse 6 uh, from verse 1 just for context and there it says at this also my heart trembles and is moved out of his place Hear attentively the noise of his voice and the sound that goes out of his mouth. He directs it under the whole heaven and his lightning unto the ends of the earth. After it, a voice roars. He thunders with the voice of his excellency and he will not stay them when his voice is heard. God thunders marvelously. With his voice, great things doeth he, which we cannot comprehend and snow is exactly one of them it's one of the great things god does that we cannot comprehend the lightning the thunder now we talk about snow and then it continues to say in verse 6 for he saith to the snow he actually commands it be thou on the earth likewise to the small rain and to the great rains of uh, of his strength he seals up the hand of every man that all men may know his work then the beast goes into the dens and remain in their place. How do the animals know how where to go and where to go? And, you know, it, it's all God's greatness and goodness. And that's why I'm excited about Neo, the greatest God, is indeed the greatest. And he continues to say, out of the south comes the whirlwind and cold out of the north. By the breath of God, frost is given and the breath of the waters is it is straightened also by watering he wearies the thick cloud hmm. he wearies the thick cloud interesting terminology it almost sounds like meteorology here he scat he scatters his bright cloud and it is turned around by his counsels 
so I thought this was completely a natural process, but it doesn't seem like it is. It's 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 guided by God's counsels. It says that they might do that they might do whatsoever He commands them upon the face of the world in the earth. He causes it to come, whether for correction, or for His land, or for mercy. Wow! So this is this is God's purpose when it comes to precipitation deep stuff eh so the reason why god allows precipitation is for three reasons according to the bible it's for correction i don't know what that means correcting humans okay i feel i feel like i'm being corrected right now or for his land actually the land needs moisture it needs precipitation it needs snow it needs rain all right and also for mercy isn't snow beautiful to look at it? How about rain? The rain that refreshes the earth. It shows us of God's goodness and God's love and God's purpose and intentionality and intention. Verse 14 says, Hearken unto this, O Job, stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Dost thou know when God is disposed them? Dost thou know when God disposed them and caused the light of his cloud to shine? You know, science can try, but ultimately they don't know. They have no idea. Dost thou know how? Dost thou know the balancings of the clouds? This is deep science. I, w I wish we had more time to go into this study and you know study more of these things. But there's there's a science that is in place for snow to fall, for all these amazing things to happen, or not so amazing, depending on how you see it. But we'll stick with amazing for now. All right. It speaks about the balancings of the clouds, the wondrous works of him which is perfect in knowledge. How thy garments are warm. Oh, I really need some warmth right now. When he quieteth the earth by the south wind. This south wind is very cold. Hast thou with um hast thou with him spread out the sky? Do you know anything about that? No. Which is strong? And as molten looking glass. Wow. Teach us. Teach us what we shall say unto him. For we cannot order our speech by reason of darkness. Shall it be told. Shall it be told him that I speak. Shall it. Shall it be told him that I speak. If a man speak. Surely he shall be swallowed up. And now men see. And now men see not the bright light which is in the clouds, but the wind passes and cleanses them. Fair weather comes out of the north, which uh, fair weather comes out of the north with God is terrible majesty, terrible majesty. Touching the Almighty, we cannot find him out. He is excellent in power and in judgment and plenty of justice. He will not afflict. Men do therefore fear him. He respects not any that are wise of heart. Those who think they are wiser than him, he doesn't respect them. He doesn't recognize them. He doesn't see them because they are too proud. So he passes them by. One day we will go deep into Job 37 and study the goodness and the greatness of God. But this chapter clearly indicates that God is the one in control of the weather. That God uses weather and, you know, meteorological, you know, happenings for his purposes. God uses everything. All right, jumping to Job chapter 38 verse 22. God asks a question to all of us. Hast thou entered into the treasures of the snow? Or hast thou seen the treasures of the hail? Of course, none of us have. And this is a rhetorical question to tell us of God's goodness and to remind us that God is in control now let's get to the crux of the message here snow represents purity of course we see that snow also represents god's power in that purity process the god is the one who is in charge in that purity and so psalms 51 7 david is praying and he says purge me with his soap and i shall be clean wash me and i shall be whiter than snow again snow indicates and symbolizes purity and cleanliness proverbs thirty-one twenty-one: 21 
She is not afraid of the snow. This is the virtuous woman. She's not afraid of the snow for a household. For all her households are clothed with scarlet snow. Then here represents challenges and difficulties and and adventures, things that are not very comfortable. This would be the stepping out of your comfort zone or facing the world as as tough as it is. So this represents the toughness of the world. You know, coldness really is what what this is all about. Isaiah 118, favorite verses here for many people. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Again, in this context, snow means purity and cleanliness. Purity and Holiness is the word. Isaiah 55 verse 10, God tells us that his thoughts, his way of thinking is above our way of thinking as far as the heaven is from the earth. Or should I add as far as the east is from the west? And then he tells us his purpose in precipitation. It says, for as the rain comes down and as the snow from heaven and returns not thither, but waters the earth and makes it to bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So this is the purpose of precipitation for God's land, he said, for, for God's land, but it's also for mercy. But let's focus for God's land as we read in in, in Job, that was really a key verse to unlock this whole snow Bible study. And for those who are just joining, this is your boy James with basic Bible study on snow. And we're studying what the Bible says about snow. And stick till the end because I have seven, actually not seven, but I have fun, fantastic facts about snow that will change your life forever. And it's all connected with this Bible study. So here we see that God's purpose in precipitation is to allow for fruit, for harvest, for growth, for things to grow, you know. Ultimately, it all falls into the water cycle, but even more so into photosynthesis. The whole purpose is so that the, 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 the plants, the trees, the vegetation may be able to bring forth their fruits, that they may be able to give forth oxygen and to be available for the service of men. Jeremiah 18, 14, Will a man leave the snow of Lebanon, which comes from the rock of the field, or shall the cold flowing waters that come from another place be forsaken? Now this speaks to the peculiarity or the how special the snow of Lebanon is and was and how it cannot be left. And so we see snow here as something precious, as something worthy to be kept and to be guarded and to be held to. So starting from verse 10, it says, If it do evil in my sight, that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. Now therefore, Go to, speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you and devise a device against you. Return ye now every one from his evil way and make your ways and your doings good. And this is the constant message of God's word. Turn from evil, come to holiness, be holy even as I am holy. And they said, There is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices and we will do the imagination of his evil heart. Don't say there's no hope. This is why they say. They say there is no hope. There's no hope for them to turn. There's no hope for them to change. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Ask ye now among the heathen, who hath heard such things? The virgin of Israel hath done a very horrible thing. Will a man... Leave the snow of Lebanon. Now God is comparing himself to snow. And this is where things get interesting. Because we see that now God is comparing himself to snow. Will a man leave the snow of Lebanon which comes from the rock of the field or the cold flowing waters that come from another place to be forsaken? Because my people hath forgotten me. They have burned incense to vanity and they have caused them to stumble 
in their ways from the ancient paths to walk in paths in ways or in in a way not cast up to make their desolate to make their land desolate and a perpetual hissing every one that passes thereby shall be astonished and wag his head it's like ah yeah 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 god will scatter them he continues to say what he will do as a punishment but really god is comparing himself to snow again i'm excited because we're going to cover very soon the fantastic facts about snow that will change your life forever daniel chapter 7 verse 9 i beheld this is daniel seeing god and how is god the father depicted it says i beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as what as snow snow represents that purity that holiness that only god has and the hair of his head was pure as wool wow interesting sounds very similar to isaiah 118 his throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire matthew 28 verse 3 jesus on the mount of transfiguration his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow so clearly now we see how this is the journey of snow, how snow keeps turning and growing. It's as if it's, it's the crystals that are, you know, catching up the crystals. We'll, we'll get to the crystals in a moment. I don't want to reveal anything before time, but we see Christ equating himself or very associated with snow. So now when you see snow, what do you see? Well, let's move on to Mark 9. Again, this is the Mount of Transfiguration. Christ's raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. This is the highest type of white that we can get. And last but not least, we have Revelation 1.14. And speaking of Jesus again, his head and his hairs were white like wool, and guess what? As white as snow and his eyes were as flame of fire this is interesting now let's get to the most interesting part where we're going to connect all the dots here fact number one for you to have snow and this is taken from foxweather.com for you to have snow there must be pollen or dust in the air to form snow and this is really interesting. You do need the hygroscoping nuclei for you to form snow. Now, we've already studied that snow represents and means purity of God, the holiness of God. And guess what? For us to form snow, for us to be pure and holy and just and true, we cannot do it on our own. We need something else. We need someone else. We need, ultimately, Jesus. Now, now, if, if, I, if I just read it here, it's going to make much sense. But it says the first step in the formation of a snowflake is an extremely cold water drop, droplet freezing onto a pollen or dust particle in the sky. This creates an ice crystal. Then water vapor freezes into the primary ice crystal as it descends towards the ground, which builds new crystals, the six sides of the snowflake. And we'll get to the six sides in a moment. But for you to form snow, you do need the particles. You do need the small little something to hang on. You do need something small to, to actually have your snow built upon. And guess what these particles are? What is it that we need for us to be pure and to be holy? There's only one thing that the Bible puts forward as what we need, and that is the particle of faith. Faith is the substance. It is the hygroscopic nuclei of all things, of all snow. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, we cannot see God. We cannot have a pure heart. Our snow, our righteousness is by faith. Our snow, 
our righteousness is by faith, which is why we need those particles, even as small as a mustard seed. That's what you need to form that snow, to form that pure life. And just before we move on to another fantastic fact about snow that will change your life forever, snow is actually interesting. Snow happens under very specific conditions. And one of them is it has to be extremely cold. For us to have a life of holiness, a life of righteousness, we have to go through extreme weather. We have to go through extreme measures. We have to make extreme decisions. And so Jesus says, if any man shall follow me and wants to be my disciple, let him deny himself. That sounds cold. That sounds extremely cold. Deny himself. Take up his cross. That sounds extremely cold. And follow me. Yes, these are the conditions of snow. These are the conditions of righteousness. These are the conditions of holiness. The temperature has to be extremely cold. And so we are told that we should count it all joy when we fall into diverse temptations because these are the perfect conditions for the formation of snow. Now, I hope next time you look at snow, you see it very differently. Interesting fact number two. All snowflakes have six sides or arms. Now, this was quite interesting because we know that, you know, snow is formed or made from water, right? And water has, has an interesting structure, atomically speaking. It has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. And so it tends to form a triangle, right? And so when you put, when you look at a triangle, right? A triangle is really three sides, triangle, well, tri sides. I wish it was tri site. It's a triangle, right? <laughs> so all snow, all snowflakes, or the crystals, all of them have six sides. Six. Six is an interesting number, and we all know that six is the number. Well, we don't know. We don't all know. Well, biblically speaking, when you study the number six, you find that it is the number of man. It's the number of you. And me, because God created humanity on day number six. And what's really interesting about this is that no matter how much the snowflake increases in size, it will always maintain this hexagon shape. What's so special about six? Well, I won't finish this part in this video, but we are going to study more about the number six. But whichever translation or whichever interpretation you arrive at, this shows me that it is possible even for man to be holy. Yes, it is possible for you and for me to be holy. And it is God's purpose that man will be holy. And just as we talk about six, six is also a number of counterfeit in the Bible. We read about 666 in the book of Revelation. That's not accidental. That's, that's how God speaks. That's biblical, that's biblical numerology. That's how God speaks. And this is just a warning for us to beware of fake holiness. In the last days, people will have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. So something to be careful about as well. Another interesting fact is that not two snowflakes are exactly the same. That's mind-blowing, right? Not two snowflakes are exactly the same. Now, I know there may be debates about some people who found two snowflakes that are exactly the same. But what we're saying here is as follows. Each snowflake follows a slightly different path from the sky to the ground. And therefore, it encounters slightly different atmospheric conditions on the way down. Therefore, every flake tends to look unique, resembling everything from prisms and needles to the familiar sea pertain, according to the well, that's National Weather Science or Services. And here's an example of different shapes that the snowflakes takes, depending on the experiences. Well, although this is not a perfect example, but it reminds us of how we are wonderfully and fearfully made and how unique each one of us is 
in God's kingdom. The value of one single person is beyond estimate. And so Jesus asked this profound question, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Because he, she is so unique. She is irreplaceable if you think about it because she is the only one. He is the only one. What do you think about snow? Ha, huh, how about this one? And we'll be done. What if I told you snow isn't white? Actually, it isn't. So it says here, folksweather.com, that snow might appear white as it falls from the clouds or accumulates on the ground, but it's actually translucent. That's because snow is comprised of tiny ice crystals, which are also translucent. Light is bent when passing through a translucent material. Now, translucent means it allows a little bit of light, but not completely. But it's also not op opaque. So when light hits a snowflake, it is uh, so sorry. Yeah. So when light hits a snowflake, it is bent and scattered across the visible light spectrum by the facets and imperfections in each crystal. According to the science notes.org, the scattering results in white light, similar to the way a pile of sugar or salt appears white, even though each individual crystal appears clear. Interesting, right? So actually, it's not white at all. And that made me think about the purity that God is asking us, the type of holiness that God is calling you and me to. It's not a type of holiness where we manufacture our holiness, our own purity, our whiteness, so to speak. But God simply wants us to be transparent even. He wants us to allow his light through. He wants us to absorb his light and to share his light such that our snow is not really our snow, that our whiteness, our purity is no longer ours, but it flows from the heart of God. Anyways, in closing, so something that I found interesting as well is how the study of the crystals that form, you know, when snow is forming, the crystals. Now, I hope you guys know what I'm talking about. I think it's called crystal. Chris, Christography, Christography, right? It's just how the crystals rearrange in different atomic substances. I'm speaking too much science here. But isn't it interesting that actually the study of Christ is also called, not also, but it's actually very similar wording. It's called Christo, Christology. Now I'm confusing the two. Christology, Christography. Ha, huh, interesting. What if there was a similarity between Christology and Christography. And that's why we've just discovered, by the way, as we were studying the Bible, that truly snow at its deepest level, even highest level, represents Jesus, his holiness, his life of suffering, and his life of victory, his life of purity, and his life of wholeness, which is what he gives to us freely. All we have to do is accept to be like him. All we have to do is accept his example. I hope that this Bible study was life-changing as it has been for me. Now I see snow differently. And there's so many things we still have to learn about snow. How does it form? Why does it form? Why did God create it? And why does it matter? And what does it teach us about God? Well, clearly, snow teaches us. That holiness is not accidental. That holiness is a process that requires very specific conditions that we all have to submit to. That yes, it is possible to be holy and to have victory over sin. And thanks for joining me. It was your boy James with another basic Bible study, breaking God's word one verse at a time, looking at Jesus face to face so that we may be changed into the same image in closing let us pray heavenly father thank you for your words thank you for teaching us to be snow not just to see snow but to be snow to experience purity to experience holiness in having faith in the particle in the substance of faith which is in christ jesus and then to allow that particle to allow jesus himself to be the one that moves and drives us and directs us and shows us where to go and lodges us where we need to be lodged. To allow him to be the center 
of our lives to be the gravity of all that we do thank you for allowing those who have watched this video i pray that they may come again as we study more about your word is my prayer in jesus name amen hey guys thank you for watching that video my name is james Niomugabo, and i am passionate about creating high quality videos about god really my purpose and my goal is to help you discover and experience god you know there's a lot we can talk about god <laughs> And it would take days and days. But what I do here is just break it down in a basic format so that you can have the experience of encountering God just as I have done in my own life and just as many people are right now as they watch this video. And so if you have been helped by this video, please do like, do subscribe, and all the links are in the description if you want to go to the website and book a personal Bible study. I'll be excited. I am waiting to dive deep into God's word just with you in whatever time of your choosing you have. Until then, God bless you and see you in another video.